Hey, good morning YouTube. This is Jimmy with Two of the Top Crane. Had a request on uh, one of the comments. They wanted to see the engine in this thing. I, I can't get to the engine in the carrier at the present time. I've got the boom laid down over the front of the crane. So at some point I'll have it back over the rack. I'll pull the, pull the covers off so you can see the engine in the carrier. But um, I've got to replace a valve in the upper on this crane and so i've got the engine cover open on the crane portion itself there's the little 100 and it's around 175 horsepower four cylinder mercedes and then uh, we got a couple pumps on the back side basically this is where all the magic happens it's where all your pilot pressure for your hydraulic controls comes from also where your system pressure and whatnot is diverted out to the functions. I apologize for that whining noise you're probably hearing in the background occasionally. It's the uh, actually the ride height valve on the dolly on this other crane that's sitting next to us. That was the that's our hundred ton crane that was in one of our other videos that was out on a job. Anyway, the valve I got to replace it's this one here. It, th this valve it locks out uh, the telescope cylinder for when you're in the boom dolly it prevents the cylinder from being able to extend uh, without any input so anytime you have it in the dolly you want to make sure that valve is locked out um, it's leaking when it's cold it, it doesn't always leak but when it was really cold I think it was six degrees and I was extending out and it, it was puking some oil out on the deck and I don't I don't like the deck of my crane getting wet so I try to uh, keep it as clean as possible and you can see that it's gotten a little messy down in there so I'm gonna replace that valve and stop that leak hopefully so I got the new valve laying back here on my boom dolly there it is that's that's what $750 will get you a block of steel with basically a three position or three wave ball valve is all it is and I called uh, Tadano called their service department kind of try to get some insight on what to expect when I pull those lines off there because some machines you unhook a line and you dump everything out of the hydraulic tank I don't think that little drain pan is gonna catch I don't know how much it holds 150 gallons of oil maybe 200 gallons of hydraulic oil so I called them to get some insight. I was told I'd lose a gallon or less. I've got 40 pounds of floor dry because I don't always believe what I hear. So hopefully between that pan and that 40 pounds of floor dry, we can contain whatever comes out of those lines when I take that valve off. Anyway, I'm gonna get this camera maybe set up in there. I'll try to record this. Uh, depends on how tight those fittings are, whether or not I can even use the part of video that I record it may just be solid beeps uh, just depends on how my language gets and how tight those fittings are so or how much oil I lose so anyway I'm gonna shut the camera off I'll try to get situated up in there where you guys can kind of see what I'm doing and we will go from there so uh, tried to find a wrench that would fit on those fittings we didn't have one that size so I've got kind of an assortment 15 inch crescent wrench isn't going to be big enough grab me a pipe wrench we'll try to get them pop loose with that if that doesn't get it I keep this in my truck this one may be big enough to get those fittings loose so there's uh, my little crescent wrench that I keep in my truck next to a 15 inch crescent wrench so big equipment requires big tools I guess I'm gonna see if I can get them get the fittings at least broke loose I'm probably not gonna record that because there's inadvertent I'm sure there's gonna be language involved um, so yeah I've already thrown a little bit of floor dry down inside there as a precaution I tried to stick get my drain pan weaseled in there. there's no way it's gonna fit so I don't know how much of a mess I'm gonna make but We'll get it cleaned up one way or another. 
Okay, we actually got them loose. They weren't, weren't as bad as I thought. The plus side is their DIN fittings. It's, uh, it's a fitting that's not real common in the United States other than on German-made machines. Um, once the collar's loose, they, they're fairly easy to disconnect. They've got kind of a rounded taper inside of them, and uh, it, it's really kind of a reusable compression-style fitting. But I'm going to, I'm sure we're going to make a mess. I'm just not sure how big a mess. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this other valve that's down here on the dolly, get it up here. I'm probably going to be right in front of the camera most of the time, and for that I apologize. We're going to try to get this thing swapped out without creating a miniature natural disaster. Uh, yeah, I'm not real confident in this at this point. I'm sure it's going to make a mess. So I got my new valve sitting up here ready to slam it in place, which I use that term loosely. It's probably not, nothing's gonna slam in place in a hurry. Okay, so one of the tricks I like to do working with hydraulics, and I know I've got a, guy, a lot of guys following this page that are in the mowing industry. So they encounter some hydraulics um, on your hydrostatic drive machines and whatnot. If you've got a fitting that you're not 100% sure of as far as pressure, if you throw a rag around it as you take it off or get it pretty loose, if there is some pressure in there, you don't have to worry about it as much because the rag will diffuse it. Um, also, eye protection. You shoot this crap in your eyes and you will not be very happy about it. than I expected. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, kill the camera, just snug those up, and then I gotta change the orientation of the handle on my valve. That way it corresponds with the stickers that are on here. That way, if someone else was operating this crane, they wouldn't put that valve in the wrong position, so. Yeah, there's that. Okay, so there it is, all installed. Got all the fittings tightened up. We've got our handle oriented correctly. And our lock mechanism back on it. Some uh, some people may wonder why there's a lock on that. It's uh, it's so if we got to leave the crane somewhere, we can lock it. Keep people with uh, uh, less than adequate common sense from pulling on stuff that they shouldn't be messing with. Actually, it, uh, it didn't make near as much of a mess as what I anticipated. I'm trying to get the light where you can see down in there. But I 
bet I lost less than a pint of oil out of that whole deal. I was expecting at least a gallon, but less is better in, in that regard. So now all we gotta do is take it outside, set it up. We'll uh, run it in and out a few times, run some sections up in the air, get get the air worked out of, if, out of it if there is any, and make sure everything functions correctly. So once I get it out there, I'll uh, see about popping the engine covers off of the engine for the carrier, and you guys can get a sneak peek at that. So one more thing I'll cover real quick. Um, I, I mentioned earlier about throwing a rag around a fitting like I, for instance I was going after this fitting I was taking it loose I wrapped a rag around it in case there was some pressure in it I'm going to add to that a little bit if you develop a hydraulic leak in something and you know it's spraying but you don't know exactly where it's spraying from do not run your hand down the hose to try to find it These some of these systems have in excess of 3,000 PSI in them. So if you run your hand down that hose and there's a pinhole in that hose, you run the very real risk of possibly injecting hydraulic oil under your skin. If that were to happen, you need to immediately stop doing what you're doing and get yourself to the hospital. Um, if, if you end up with a blister of hydraulic oil under your skin, it can cause tissue to die you can end up with gangrene. It can go from a localized injection to, I mean, you could even lose your hand or lower arm. It, it can be really, really nasty. So do not run your hands down your hydraulic hoses, even on your zero turn mowers, whatever you guys are working on. Um, like I said, I got a lot of lawn guys that are following my page. All those uh, zero turn mowers have a hydrostatic drive system in them sooner or later you're probably going to encounter a leak the correct way to locate a leak if you can't physically see it but you know it's spraying from somewhere is you use a piece of cardboard or something and you run that along the hose and let it spray the cardboard i can't stress that enough if you get hydraulic oil injected under your skin at high pressure you need to take yourself to the hospital immediately it is it, i mean that, that would be considered an emergency situation uh, that ranks right up there with cutting a finger off or smashing a hand so that is not something you want to play with that's also I'm not saying that to scare you guys away from working on your own stuff because I, I wouldn't want you to I mean lose out on the opportunity to save a little money if you're one of those people that mind digging into something but just be cautious in what you're digging into and and people ask me you know I've been doing this for I've been spinning wrenches on big equipment for more than 20 years. They asked me, well, how do you have all your fingers? It's because I'm careful where I put them. I try to exercise a little common sense and know where I'm putting my hands before I stick my hands in there. So I would uh, recommend that everyone else do the same if you want to be able to count to 10 for the rest of your life. <laughs>